Welcome to week two of the Keto Rewind January Clean 30 Challenge. I'm Jess, and obviously you're watching Keto Rewind. Welcome to week two. Congrats on getting to week two. If you're still watching, you have started week two, and that means you still care. You're not going to give up. Nothing's getting in your way this time, and that's what's making the difference this time around. And I want to say kudos to you, yes to you, and I am super excited to start week two with you. Now, obviously, the meal plan for week two is down below, and today we're going to do a full day of eating. And if you're just now coming or finding my channel, for the month of January, I'm going to be doing weekly meal plans where I am showing you what I ate to lose 130 pounds back in my journey to get me to this far. <laughs> so basically, for the month of January, I'm going to be summarizing how I've been eating to lose 130 pounds. And I'm sharing that with you. Everything's free. Enjoy. So next, <laughs> next thing. Now, I was reflecting on back when I was 309 pounds and starting my journey back in February 11th, 2019. I remember that day like it, something major in my life happened. It was one of those days I will never forget. So February 11th, 2019 was like my second birthday, the birthday that gave me the new look on life, the second chance at life. So that date to me is always going to be special. Now, week one, you get through it like you got the high of, oh, this is the new you, this is the new me, I'm going to lose all this weight, and then week two hits. And the reality sets in that you're not turning to food anymore for comfort, you're not turning to food for stress, you're not turning to food because you're bored, you're now trying new things that is feeling really uncomfortable because it's new, it's not the normal. You're changing that new normal to something with healthier habits. Week two, that reality sets in and I remember struggling through week two. In my, when I was, and that was when I had 309 pounds of abuse on my body. So, now I'm not saying that to scare you off. I'm saying that so that you hear this next part. Week three changed my life forever. Today is week three. I normally am not looking forward to weigh-ins. It's like weigh-in Mondays. But now that I'm doing keto, I actually can't wait to hop on the scale because after all, I don't really care how much I weigh, I just want to get healthy. I did hop on the scale this morning and I am 287. Inserting pictures below the scale. <laughs> but I can't believe how much better I feel. Like, oh my God, I feel so good. Right now, I'm literally in weight loss mode because I have a goal in mind. I'm tired of being morbidly obese. So I'm eating right now to get to that goal. And the variation of how long it takes you to feel like the effects that I felt on week three is going to vary by how much abuse you have done to your body. I was morbidly obese for 17, 18-ish years before I decided to change my life. That was a lot. That's a lot to go through <laughs> and work through, you know, so that means it's going to depend on your level of abuse, abuse to your body. Um, how long or if you even feel these effects or not. So point being week three, I turned a corner. I woke up despite still being like 290 something. I don't remember what I weighed in week three, but I'm going to guess it was 290 something. I woke up feeling the way I feel today. I felt like it was a new chance at life. I felt energized. I felt, I woke up with like so much energy and like Everything changed from this point forward and my, the, the, the keto lifestyle was sealed. <laughs> I sealed the deal on week three because I felt so amazing that I was willing to give up my best friend, sugar, my best friend, food. I was willing to live my life without those things again because I felt so much better. It was worth it to me. And every time that I get that weak feeling and like, you know, I still fight this and go back to sugar. Well, I remember how amazing week three felt and how I felt for so long. So I have technically I'm next month is my two year anniversary of being a ketogenic enthusiast <laughs> or someone who's lived a ketogenic lifestyle for 
literally more than five minutes, you know, like it, I'm, a, I'm upcoming on two years. That's a long time to spend living a certain way. So I wouldn't have spent two years living this way if it didn't make sense. And week three showed me the way. <laughs> so let me just, I'm just, not that I wanna scare you off or anything, but week two is gonna be tough. If you were like me, who was an emotional eater, binge eater, stress eater, you know, boredom eater, happy eater, just sugar addict, <laughs> It's gonna be tough. It's and changing your life takes more than a week. But you gotta get through it and you gotta feel the reason why you're doing it in the first place. And that will give you strength. And here I am almost two years into the process and standing before you today feeling amazing. So anyways, I'm gonna get off my soapbox. I just wanted to inspire you and know that good things are coming if you just fight for it and you don't accept failure or giving up. You have to just fight every day. And as long as you haven't given up, you haven't failed. So week two kicks off today. We are going to kick off. I'm going to head out for my walk. The lighting's crappy today because it's cloudy, but that's not an excuse not to move my body. So I am going to go get a walk in. It feels amazing. Then I'm going to come back here and we're going to make lunch, which is going to be an omelet with uh, Canadian bacon. And dinner is going to be a new casserole because it is yucky outside today. We're going to do a baked recipe, baked chicken with loaded cauliflower soup. So I'll see you in a few. Okay, so we're going to preheat our pan and we're gonna do a three egg omelet. So it's pretty self-explanatory. So we have three eggs here. We're just gonna whisk them up real quick. Oh, I forgot to put salt and pepper in there. A good three finger pinch of salt. And some pepper. I love pepper, don't judge. <laughs> and we're just going to mix that around and I'm gonna get a tablespoon of butter. And before I cook my actual omelet, I'm going to cook up my Canadian bacon. This is the one I'm using. I get it from Costco normally, <laughs> but I was in a pinch and this is my grocery store, sells like six slices versus Costco's like two pounds. So definitely better deal at Costco. But anyways, follow the serving size on the back. If I get to focus, follow the serving size on the back. It's still not focusing. <laughs> and basically three slices. So I'm gonna put a tablespoon of butter and three slices of Canadian bacon in our pan. Okay, we're gonna slide the omelet onto the plate and enjoy lunch. And here's my finished product. One tablespoon of butter, cheddar cheese omelet, and three slices of bacon. Next, we're gonna have our snack, keto, my keto coffee, unflavored collagen heavy cream, and coffee. You've probably seen him once or twice before on this channel. Um, but today is day eight of the Keto Rewind Clean 30 Challenge, also known as- I'm doing it too. <laughs> yes. All right, well, it's dinner time, and tonight's menu <laughs> is cauliflower, loaded cauliflower soup. Um, and one thing I want to mention, I don't do much cheese, but when I do cheese, I make sure I do it this way. And the main thing is you can have cheese, I just limit it. But the, the way you're going to save and get the most flavor for your buck will be shredding your own cheese. When you buy packaged cheese, it does contain lots of potato starch and other starches to keep it from touching everything else in the package. So if you're gonna make something with cheese in it, shred your own. Yes, it's marginal, but it does add up at the end of the day when you're trying to be clean. So um, I have shredded some, or I should say my dad, <laughs> shredded some cheddar cheese and we're gonna go ahead and assemble the rest. So I'm gonna change the camera angle so you can see a close up of our cheese and everything. I'm gonna double this recipe because this is a great soup that we will, we will have a lot. And because we're feeding six people, um, it's just easier to double the soup and save the rest for when you need just a bowl of soup. So I'm gonna zoom in here and we're going to 
Um, the recipe calls for a whole onion, um, but we're going to, I'm sorry, a half onion, but we're going to use a whole onion because obviously we're doubling it. So I have two heads of cauliflower and I have a nice delicious plate of freshly grated cheese and um, it, we will use a whole block of cream cheese in this recipe. So I got a new gadget for Christmas. Let's see if this thing chops the onion. <laughs> oh, it's chopped. Awesome, that was easy. Wow. <laughs> um, this, this thing is one of those emulsion blenders that comes with a chopping head and also a whisk. So it's like three appliances in one. Pretty neat. So anyways, um, we're gonna dice up the cauliflower and get the Instant Pot ready. So let me set that up and I'll meet you right back. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is put the Instant Pot on the saute mode. And I'm gonna put the, the butter and the onion in here and let it melt. And give that a couple minutes to sweat off and saute. Okay, so now that the onions have sweat and sauteed quite a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and add the broccoli florets to this. I mean, cauliflower. And also, chicken stock. The link to this recipe will be down below. It's not my recipe, but I do make it often, and it's tried and true. Okay, mix it all around, and then put the lid on it. Put the, put the lid on it, and change it to high pressure for five minutes. So next up, I have a nine by 13 pan, and I sprayed it with avocado spray. And I'm gonna put chicken in there, and we're gonna make baked chicken to go along with our loaded cauliflower soup. So now we have four chicken breasts. They total two pounds, and I like to use old spice containers. And I put a, a medley of salt, pepper, garlic, uh, and paprika. So it makes it real easy to season it. So I highly recommend you do something like that, or you can do it individually. But this is a great rub. And like I've said a million times, I love to use dry rubs. And I'm gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees. And just pop this in there. And it's so simple and so tasty. All right, we are ready for the oven. So next up, we're gonna do some toppings while everything is cooking. And I'm just gonna use these bacon crumbles. I get them at Kirkland, I'm, I get them at Costco. Um, and the serving size is one tablespoon. So I'm gonna double that for as many people as we have here. So I have six people, so I'm gonna do 12 servings or 12 tablespoons. And if you look, it has seven, it's seven grams per tablespoon, so I can just multiply that by 12. And that's, so we're gonna look on our scale for 84, 84 grams of bacon. So our got our scale there, and the link for this scale is down below. I have a lot of people asking about it, so um, if you're interested, the link to this particular one is on, It's I got it from Amazon, and the link is below. All right, so we change this to grams. We're looking for 84. Nope, not that. 87, close enough. And next, all I'm gonna do is just pop this in the microwave uh, just to um, warm them up and crisp them up so they'll be crunchy for the top of the loaded cauliflower soup. Okay, so real quick, while the chicken is cooking in the oven, I wanted to do a few suggestions. You can pan fry the chicken by itself, dice it up, and just take the cooked chicken and put it into the soup. That's one way to do this. The second way would be have a roasted or a rotisserie chicken that you either pre-bought or make yourself and use that for the side of chicken. Or you can do what we did here, throw some chicken in a pan, throw it in the oven, <laughs> You got chicken. So anyways, I want to throw those ideas out there. So if you have also leftover chicken, that would also be a great way to reinvent leftovers. So anyways, the Instant Pot here is ready to hit the quick release and we'll start the next step. Ooh. Now at this point, we're going to take the thing that we chopped the onions with 
also has the same attachment where you just swap out the tip. And this time we're gonna use an immersion blender and we're gonna grind up the cauliflower. Okay, now we're gonna add two teaspoons of garlic powder. And salt. Pepper. And then I'm gonna switch my Instant Pot to the saute mode. And we're going to add in the cheese at this point, so already smelling great. Woo! Fogging up my lens. And then we're going to add our cream. I, you could use any type of, you know, milk. You could even use almond milk in this recipe. Coconut milk. Um, use, you do you. <laughs> and then the next thing we're going to do is add in our cheese. And this is pre, I measured out two cups of cheese. It was 94 grams each cup. So just a FYI, if you're curious <laughs> or you want to measure it out, um, but pop that in there along with a, a whole, since I doubled this, since I doubled the recipe, um, I'm using the whole block of cream cheese. And then we're gonna stir this all up, give it a taste test, and it's done. We're gonna pull the chicken out of the oven and serve everything up. So I'll be back when it's time to serve it up. All right, go for it. Chicken. Chicken. Six ounces. There. Mm -hmm. So here's the macros for today. I already logged the, the lunch, which was a tablespoon of butter, three eggs, and um, three, three slices of Canadian bacon. I did forget to add my cheese, so we're going to go ahead and add that real quick. It was cheddar cheese, quarter cup. I usually shred my own, <laughs> um, but for lunch I was in a pinch, and it's okay. Oops, not this one. All right, so one serving was a quarter cup. And now we're going to log dinner. Now, dinner is interesting. So I actually don't have that in my Carb Manager app. So I'm going to show you how to import a recipe that you find online. So you go up here and you find, you search, right? Well, there's recipes and meal plans. You can import a recipe. Now, I've already gone through and looked, but you would, if you want to see if a recipe is already in here, this is the name of the inst of the website that I got the soup from. Well, there's no search, nothing comes up in the search results. So we're going to import the recipe. So over here we hit import recipe and it says where's the URL. So I'm going to go to the the link which is Kaylin's Kitchen and we're going to enter that in Carp Manager. And it will grab all of those uh, meal items and log it in for you. So check this out. So right now we have one serving, but before I do that, I'm gonna double check that it got it right. So half an onion, two tablespoons of olive oil, large head of cod, da 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 da. You know, double check these are all correct because this does make a difference. But we're gonna go ahead and log one serving because that's what I did. Now, check it out. There it is. 
It's right there. So I am going to edit the recipe. And there we are. Oh, I have to add the chicken. I had Kirkland chicken breast. I had six ounces. So that would be 1.25 servings of four ounce servings. And I don't log spices. And that's mainly because I leave a big cushion in my net carbs. Um, so, so I end up having one and a quarter serving. I'm sorry. <laughs> I ended up having one and a half servings of that soup. So I made sure I notated that. And be honest, <laughs> it was basically one and a half ladles full of soup. Um, and then I also was hungry today. So I did have a handful of macadamia nuts. Oop, I spelled that wrong. <laughs> Oh, no, I guess I didn't. Macadamia nuts, and I had a quarter cup add today, and that was good. So being that mac, I was over by, because I was hungry, <laughs> um, I was over one gram, but still the goal is 20 or 20 net carbs or less a day, so I'm good there. I'm happy about that. And being that I went for a walk today, I was hungry, so I just went ahead and added an ounce of macadamia nuts. Um, it's not listed in the Clean 30, but I listened to my body. I was hungry, and I have it so it does not deduct any of the exercise calories. So I know I have a cushion because I went five miles today. So I was not worried at all by having a little bit over in my day. But if I didn't walk, I probably would have not had the macadamia nuts. So it's all about listening to your body and paying attention what you actually did. So anyways, that was today's macros, and I'll see you tomorrow.